and welcome to another live time trading video. In this video we're going to go over Race Vision, a program you can install separately on any computer that's on your local network and point it to your live time scoring system and get live information to display about practice and racing. So to get started I have set up two computers. One on the left hand side is my scoring computer and on the right hand side I've installed Race Vision you can go to our website at www.livetimerc.com and go to the section of download software and you should be able to get a version of Race Vision. Go ahead and install it and it should create a shortcut on the desktop of any computer that you want to use for display. Now, on your Lifetime scoring system, uh, I've selected an event here and I'm, I'm ready to go. I've got some races and some drivers and things all set up. But in order for Race Vision to be able to talk to your scoring system, you're going to need to turn on the live time service. It's this icon in the upper right corner. You click on it and turn it on. Now devices can connect to your scoring system and show live information. By the way, if you want the service to turn on automatically every time you turn on your scoring system, just use the automatically allow when live time starts button here too. Note right here it says the IP address of this machine. When I go and fire up uh, Race Vision, it's going to ask me for the IP address and I should be able to just type in this one and everything should connect. A couple of other things to note here too is that uh, under the Live Times uh, service area, there's a section here called Security. This manages the amount of connections that you'll want uh, to be able to accept. Right now, I'm only going to accept one guest connection and one validated connection or a connection with a password. If you have multiple computers you want to connect at once, you can do that too. Just make sure to up the connection count here before you start connecting all your computers and you should be all set. Okay, I'm going to switch here over to the other computer with Race Vision and I'm going to, to go ahead and run it. It's going to ask me for an IP address. You'll notice I've already typed in the IP address that's on the scoring system and it will remember what that IP address is. If I just hit connect now, it's going to connect as a guest. If I type in a password and hit connect, it's going to connect as an as a uh, authenticated user here, and you and you'll see that or a validated connection here. Um, this password will need to match the password here in Race Vision in order for that to work. So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. All right, and you'll notice that this Race Vision pr uh, computer now shows up in the list. If at any time I want to, I can click on it and I can set disconnect and I can cut it off. Um, not that you'd want to, but it's just an idea. You know, if you want to manage connections, you can. Uh, you'll also notice that now there's one guest connection out of one. If another race vision tries to connect right now without typing in a password, it will not be allowed. Okay, so you'll see on the right hand side now it's already showing the first race. By default, when you turn it on and there's an event selected, when I go to race, this is the one that's going to be displayed here. If I select race 2, race 2 changes on my race vision display along the right hand side as well. If I decide to go to open practice, the moment I click on practice and turn it on, the section on the right hand side here changes. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple laps. And you'll notice that the display on the right hand side changes as well. As I add laps, the laps start getting added as well. When I close out practice, practice closes out here as well. The moment I turn off practice, this one will go back to showing the race screen. So these things are clearly communicating back and forth, and so that's really all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of other options, and then we'll play around with the settings in uh, Race Vision itself, so you can kind of customize it a little bit more. One other thing is that if you click on the live time service and you click on the messaging box, if you want to send a message that will display in Race Vision, just type it in and hit broadcast message. Notice that the message now shows up in Race Vision. If I hit clear message, it goes away. Okay, now in Race Vision itself on this computer, You'll notice it has all the extra buttons and things on it that you might not want if you just want this on a big screen. So there's a section here or a button called full screen. If you click on it, all the other things go away. It just shows you the racing information. 
go ahead and hit this escape key and the information shows back up and you can navigate. You also have your regular minimize and maximize button as well. Um, one thing to note here is that if you have a very high definition monitor, you can use the zoom tool here to get things to be a little bit bigger in your display. So feel free to tweak it to display the data the best way for you and your monitors at your track. Now additionally, you might want to tweak some more look and feel things here as well. That's where the settings piece comes in. If you hit this gear, you are able to do a couple of different adjustments. The first is start in full screen mode. So every time you just want to fire all the way up, you can click this checkbox and it's the same thing as if opening up and clicking this button. You do have some ability to brand, so if you want to put in your own logo, you can browse to an image file, select it, select if the logo shows at the top or the bottom, and it will show up in the race information. If you don't like the colors, you can change the colors here as well. Maybe I want my background to be purple. Um, now if I click on the little eyeball here, the background here is purple. If I go to full screen, it's there as well. So you can adjust that to um, line up with the branding of your track. You also can adjust the foreground, so if you want the text to be um, black or white or something else, you have that as well. Additionally, for practice, you have the same option that you have with um, the practice display here in live time, where, let me uh, cross the loop here again. You'll notice rows displayed, you can select between one and two, and you notice how it takes up half the height. You can do that here as well. So if you've got a bigger monitor or you, got, you do a lot of open practice, you might want to do two rows so you can fit everybody on it. I'll go back to the settings. And you also, in the race section, have the ability to adjust the same colors that you have here in the tracks race sections as well. These colors will line up and work the same way. Um, keep in mind these colors are different than the colors that are shown in live time. This is because you might have an outdoor display that you need to have different contrasts or change colors that's different than the display that you use for the actual scoring computer. So these are going to be saved separately per race vision. So if you have multiple race vision monitors you can select the colors and have them remember for each. Those settings will be saved automatically when you leave the settings and show into a different area. There's no set save button or anything that you need to save in uh, Race Vision to remember those settings. If for some reason you get screwed up or you want to change your colors back to what they originally were, you can hit the reset settings button and you'll notice the colors already changed back. And when you go back to the main screen, here's back to the default colors, the same colors that are matching up with the live time client. If you click on the Live Time Service button here, you'll notice you get a couple of options. Uh, this is automatically reconnect. So if you want the system, if let's say it goes offline or you decide to, uh, maybe your laptop for your scoring computer gets disconnected or you do something between rounds, if you just turn this on and say I want to reconnect after 60 seconds, this system will automatically continue to try to reconnect to your main scoring system here as long as it's up and running. So this is a pretty nice thing to have turned on if you want to kind of set it and forget it and let it continue to connect throughout the course of an event. And then when you're finished with Race Vision, you can just close it out like any other program. And when you do so, on the left hand side here, this record will go away showing that you're no longer connected. That should be enough to get you started with Race Vision. Feel free to give it a try. If you can only use Race Vision by using the Lifetime service, so remember that that is a premium um, option as well. Uh, you can take a look at the Lifetime uh, pricing guide for more information on being able to add that option so that you can use Race Vision. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.